Yeah, g'day Bush Camping Tools here today. And uh, today we got out with this Lion Steel's M7. Okay, this is their big uh, sheath knife. As a matter of fact, it's their biggest sheath knife, the biggest fixed blade knife in their lineup. It's a seven inch blade along there. It's got a nice rounded spine, lovely choil in there, down here. So you can get a really good move up on the knife like that. Uh, we've got a solid machine Makata handle there. It's one piece of Makata. It's been milled out in the guts to accept the tang of the knife there. Held in place with three uh, Allen bolts there. I put this little bit of orange paracord on there just so I don't lose the thing. It's sleep and steel. We'll talk a little bit about more about that later on. And it's a classic drop point. Uh, so uh, in terms of blade functionality, that's a pretty functional shaped blade and uh, no need to reinvent the wheel with some funky blade design. Anyway, let's go off out there and, uh, and check it out and we'll see what's happening. All right, thanks for watching. Yeah, the first thing I put the M7 through was some chopping tests. It's clearly a big chopper, this knife, and I wanted to see how it would perform in an ungloved hand, uh, especially since it's a weighty knife. Now, an important factor in the design of a big knife such as this weighty knife is that if you're going to chop with it, the last thing you want is the motion of chopping to want to be able to pull that knife out of your hand and not be able to grip it. A lot of the times uh, when you're in the wilds, you're certainly not going to have uh, be carrying a chainsaw with you or anything that you can uh, just simply cut up logs with and baton. So you'll have to, you might have to look around uh, if you need to split wood for a fire. Uh, in this example here, this is clearly not necessary in this case. But what I'm trying to illustrate here is that uh, this piece of wood is full of knots. Now you just don't have a choice of whether you're going to pick up a piece of wood full of knots or not full of knots. Now one thing uh, with a knife as thick as this, it, it makes a good wedge, it's, it's, it's as simple as that, a good wedge to split wood apart. But sometimes there are just too many knots and it doesn't matter how hard you hit that knife, uh, it's not going to split the wood. And there's always um, the issue of getting the knife stuck in the wood. Now one of these, uh, one of the safest ways I've found to remove that is not to really uh, pick up the entire piece of wood with the knife and try and hit it off. It, it's a bit hazardous like that. Next I wanted to check out to see how the M7 performed on actually cutting uh, just dry, dead, standing wood. Uh, quite thin, maybe about an inch thick maximum. Uh, and it was pretty good at this too. Sometimes wood such as this can be misleading. You go up, you go to break it with your hands, uh, which would be my first choice rather than pulling out a knife and, and possibly the safest in some cases. But you'll find that the wood is quite tough and difficult to actually uh, break off at the end of the day and a knife is the better bet to do it. Uh, thin wood like this, a hatchet's probably too heavy to be swinging at it. So a knife is, is, is uh, dare I say, slightly better in, in that case for uh, cutting up wood like that. The knife is good too to uh, make some basic camping utensils uh, in the wild such as somewhere to chop up and prepare food on. In this case here, this is just a uh, tree being washed up by uh, the river and uh, I'm simply, uh, I've left the tree where it is, you know, unless it's in a spot where it's not convenient. Um, and, and, and simply just taking uh, some of the roundness off the outside of the trunk here so I can use it as a chopping board. And the M7's good at that. There's a lot of weight there. It is a chopper. Uh, using it as a, a bit of a carver in this instance like this, the spine is good too because it's a rounded spine. So it was quite comfortable being able to do this. If the spine had been uh, more of an acute angle, it, it, it would prove very uncomfortable, I feel. But it's, it's quite a comfortable knife to use uh, in a manner such as this. Now, the sleepless steel, it's not a stainless steel. This particular version of the M7 I'm showing here is a satin finish. It also comes in a blackened finish, which is a uh, chemically blackened version. It's not a PVD 
coating or anything like that. Uh, it's, it's not stainless, and in fact, it has, uh, well, according to Udahom, it has the same amount of soluble chromium in it as D2 does. Uh, so, there is some potential for corrosion there, especially if working around salt water. Now, I'm not by a salt water river, this is a freshwater river, uh, so I'm not too worried about that. But I wanted to see, too, uh, how it performed after cutting up a lemon. Lemons are quite acidic, and make no mistake about it, on um, non-stainless steel blades, if left uh, unclean, they can corrode from this, and I didn't have any problems there with that. After crossing the river, the knife was, it probably took about two minutes to cross this river, and the knife was submerged uh, during that period. I was a bit surprised to see this amount of rust form on the blade straight away. Uh, that liquid you see there now, that's, that's some oil, some vegetable oil, that's not water. I put some oil on it later on just to try and stem any further corrosion, but I was a bit surprised to see that. Uh, if you go to my blog, um, you will uh, see a full report on that and what Udaholm had to say about that. Now, one of the features of Sleepner should be that it really holds an edge quite well. And I used the knife uh, quite a lot uh, over about just a bit over um, a week or so cutting various different objects around the river. Now this river had recently flooded and and anyway cutting any objects around the river around any river for that matter are going to be quite abrasive because they're often submerged there they've got silt all over them and abrasive particles. In this case here this is just some wild uh, thyme to make some tea with. One of the things I'm quite big on for outdoor knives is you've got to be able to prepare food with them. Um, if you don't intend on taking, um, you know, multiple knives out with you, and on long trips that may not be practical. Uh, I have m had my reservations about such a large knife as this because it's quite a thick blade. Uh, can it do any good at chopping up food? Often I like to take dried meats with me if I'm not going to, if I think I'm not going to catch any game raw fish. Now, as I said earlier on, the knife is, the M7 really is a chopper. So if you're one of these people that like to be chopping up lots of things around the campsite, uh, it's, it's probably going to be your kind of knife. It easily will chop through uh, reasonably thick branches, dead wood. Uh, I always like to test on dead wood. Any knife will cut through green wood, but dead wood is a different matter. And the M7 easily does that. I also used it to hammer in some wooden spikes. So how well does the M7 handle cutting up vegetables? Um, in this case, onions. Onions are a really uh, good and useful uh, food to take along on camping trips, even prolonged camping trips, because... Uh, first of all, they don't go rotten easily. They'll last for just, they can just last for months almost. Uh, they're hard to squash. And they certainly can uh, turn a bland meal into a very tasty meal at the end of the day. So it was uh, fine cutting them up. Uh, it's uh, not the most comfortable knife because it is big and heavy. It's a wide blade and it's, and it's big and heavy. So it's not that comfortable for cutting vegetables, but in terms of cutting it, it, it did do a reasonable job there. Right, okay, so this is the carry system, the sheath for the M7. Uh, it's Kydex and uh, ballistic nylon like a Cordura. Uh, you can swap the carry position here by undoing uh, the one, two, three, four, eight bolts here and uh, turning the whole sheaf around on there. You've got a belt loop here, these press studs here with Velcro in there. Belt loop system there to carry on the belt. You've also got another carry option here too. You can carry the knife upside down or on a pack as well like that. Now 
my biggest beef, there's several beefs I have, dislikes about this carry system. First of all, I've got to say it's very secure and the knife is uh, very uh, well secure in there. It's impossible for this thing to come out accidentally. Uh, you've got these notches here for the thumb and if you press in there, you can remove the knife like that. It's that simple. And once that's in there, that's a really tight fit. Now you've also got this extra retaining strap here that you can use when on the move. But I found this thing to be uh, pretty useless actually because it keeps coming undone in here. It easily, easily comes off. And the problem is too, is if you reverse this for going for left-handed like this, I'm just gonna show you this here. Let me put this in here. Let's pretend we've got it the other way around. It will not uh, do up because you see that there, it's it won't reach, right? Okay, because this is in the wrong position. That will not cl that will not close over onto that there. So that's a problem there for a start. Even though you can reverse this by by doing that, um, it's not going to work. So that's it there. It will work in this position, like this, here like that. You see that there? That works there like that. But uh, so for right-handed, so I'm going to remove that for the minute here because it's a really big pain. Now the other problem with this sheaf is, is that it's this. You can hear that? It's really noisy. And walking in the bush, you may not uh, think that that's a problem, but that's a real problem. Uh, I would not take this knife with me on a hunting trip because of this. Uh, Obviously, it's not a hunting knife, but I would still not take it out with me, even if I, I was carrying a small hunting knife, because this rattle. Now, obviously, the kydex, it's rattling because the kydex is not pressed up hard against the blade. Now, when I uh, bought this knife, there was a small uh, uh, slip of paper inside the box, and it said, you know, when you take out the blade, don't be surprised if there could be scratches on it because the Kydex scratches it. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, I buy a knife to use. I don't buy a knife to stick up on the shelf, so I couldn't care less about scratches on the blade. What I do care about is if the blade fits in the sheath properly. Now, there's just too much noise from this for many sort of um, hunting applications or where, where you're going to be after game. The other thing, too, is, believe it or not, this noise after a while really can annoy your walking companions if you're walking with somebody else and it can annoy the daylights out of you too so that's uh, a right pain it needs to uh, be a bit tighter fit on that kydex there but um, other than that the the security of the knife in there is really good it's uh, almost too good can't come out so it's certainly safe from that aspect but it's pretty noisy okay so that's the m7 sheath there you go yeah, okay, so this is uh, a summary now of Lion Steel's M7. I've been using it now out in the field for uh, just over two weeks. Uh, and uh, let's see, what can I say about it first up? Okay, so I'd say comfort during use, I'd give it a 10 out of 10. It's got a very comfortable handle here. The grip is very nice in an ungloved hand. So, and, and this uh, machining on the Makata uh, handle here is quite nice so it's a very nice comfortable handle I've got no problems with that wet or dry practicality I'd say for a knife like this it's a heavy knife it's about 400 odd grams uh, with the scabbard practicality I'd give it a seven and a half to eight out of ten it's it's kind of like uh, for someone that uh, doesn't want to take a hatchet uh, of course this is not going to be as practical as a hatchet per se um, but this is for someone I think that uh, is serious about building things in the wild and would take uh, a big knife along with a smaller hunting knife uh, for smaller, more delicate tasks than actually for hunting uh, capabilities. This is obviously not a hunting knife. It's way too big and wide for that kind of thing. Uh, sturdiness, of course, I'd give it a 10 out of 10 for sturdiness. There's no problems with that. And you've seen some of the video footage there illustrating that it's a big, thick spine. Uh, it's sleep, no, it's uh, tough steel. Uh, of course, it originates from the tool steel industry um, from Udderholm, developed uh, as kind of like the replacement D2, and I've already talked about that a bit earlier on. Uh, as I said, the weight, it's not light. I'd have to give it a 6 to 7 out of 10 for carry weight. You have to consider these things if you're really hiking in a long way. 
maybe you might consider this kind of knife in a for a survival or really not a survival you're not going to carry this EDC for sure uh, more than likely maybe in a bug out situation I don't know maybe I'd consider a different kind of blade to this uh, something with some serrations on for cutting rope um, you know uh, I find that quite handy I know a lot of people don't like serrations value for money uh, I don't know about that that's up to the individual uh, yeah but uh, anyway you've seen from uh, the kind of sharpness that it's retained after just over two weeks of solid use it's still really really quite sharp uh, maybe what I didn't mention was um, what Lion still told me this is an eight degree bevel from the tip of the spine down to the cutting edge an eight degree bevel on that it's it's not very good at peeling didn't really put it for any too many peeling tasks it's 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 just just too wide for that uh, this is as I said this is a chopper uh, yeah if you like a big heavy drop point chopper um, that's that's not too long um, yeah and you like building things um, out in the wilds uh, but I've also to be honest I've been carrying a smaller knife with me uh, during the use of this uh, which is I found more practical for uh, for game and, and fishing while I've been out okay then yep line steals m7 thanks very much